everybody. It's been a while since I did an indoor hydroponic garden update. Actually, about four weeks. But uh, I took my cucumbers down, let them dry up, and uh, they just weren't producing any female flowers. There was a few with a few little cucumbers on it, but it wasn't worth the uh, energy I was putting into it. So I wanted to show you the uh, root system on these guys before I clean it all out. And that's what I'm doing today. See that there? They're kind of brown now because uh, I didn't refill the reservoir and just let it go. But let me give you a, a look, see what's going on inside. Here's what's going on inside. This is my Hoy tomato plant. I turned off the pump so you didn't have to listen to it during the video. But as you can see, it's grown up, 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 all the way up to the ceiling. I think there was too much heat up there above the light because the leaves started to die. So I'm going to lower it today. I have a fan blowing on it and switch the light to a high pressure sodium bulb because it was flowering and let me show you the first flowers. Well you guys remember I pollinated flowers with a toothbrush? Well I'm going to pollinate a hoi flower here and see how much pollen we get off of it. Oh there's some white flies. Here's a look at the roots of the Hoy tomato plant. As you can see, they're massive. There's a huge mass of roots down there, and I think I need to add another air stone because this water is not really circulating that well with all those roots down at the bottom. But I can't wait to take this tomato plant apart and just show you <laughs> how many roots are down in there. This is my first ripe tomato of 2013, and this is a Van Wert, Ohio heirloom tomato. And I cloned this from a plant I grew in Wisconsin over the summer. And it's really scrawny because it was hurt by frost when I had it outside overnight. But it did produce one tomato and that's all I needed because I wanted to keep the seeds going. Today I'm going to show you how I germinate stevia or stevia, pronounced either way. A lot of people have trouble germinating it and it's all because of the seeds that they get or they put them in the wrong conditions. So I'm going to show you how I do it, and here's a pack that I got from Burpee. I know Burpee has good seeds for germination, and um, I've tried seeds off of eBay that were pretty cheap, and they didn't germinate at all. Those are from Paraguay. And uh, so, yeah, I'm using Burpee, and last year I used some from the Cook's Garden, which is also owned by Burpee, so um, they're probably the same seeds. So let's open this up and see what we got. Ah, and you can see they're sealed inside of this, so we have to open this. It says uh, 15 seeds, so let's see if that's what we get. All right, I opened it up, and it looks like they gave me 16, so I got one extra. And you can see how tiny these seeds are. They're very small, and I guess I'm going to be planting about 10 of them. I'll do um, four in hydroponics, start at rock wool, and I'll do six in dirt and just use uh, Scott's potting mix. Here are my rock wool cubes. I soaked them overnight in water that had a pH of 6.0. I have them in this cookie tray, which I'm gonna germinate them in. And let me zoom in here and put the seeds in. They're very tiny, as you can see. And I'll just drop them in. All right, here's where the seeds are going to go in soil, and this is Scott's potting mix. I got it wet already, and I'm just going to make a small divot in each section, and put one seed in each. Okay, the seeds are now all in there. They're in each divot. I didn't cover them with dirt. And I'm just going to spritz them with water and then uh, put some shrink wrap around it and put it under the grow lights. Okay, here's my shrink wrap machine. And voila! 
Okay, for germination, I have the seeds under two T8 40 watt 6500K bulbs. And you can see how far the bulbs are from the seeds here. And let me take you in here. And you can see that my temperature is 77 degrees. You want to um, germinate your seeds between 75 and 80 degrees. And maybe that's why I've had such luck with uh, germinating these is because I had the perfect temperature and the perfect distance from the light. And I'd say it's about 12 inches from the light bulbs. And I'm going to let that run for uh, 16 hours a day on and 8 hours off. Here I'm just mixing up some nutrient solution for my old windowsill hydroponic unit which I'm going to have under two T5 lights. This is 700 ppm of Maxigrow and I'm going to be growing radishes and uh, lemon basil and stevia. I'm not sure what stevia takes for nutrients but this will be a test to see how it goes. Alright, first thing I planted in this unit was two seeds of lemon basil. You can see right there they're starting to sprout through the rock wool and the rock wool is turning green from algae so as soon as the plants get a little bit bigger I can put some uh, hydrogen pebbles on there to block the light. And then over here I have two radishes growing and I didn't use any rock wool on these. I um, just put the seeds in a wet paper towel, stuck them between the hydrogen pebbles and they sprouted so the radishes will be free to grow and uh, seems to be working out and then over here in the corner I have stevia I have never grown stevia in hydroponics it took a while for the roots to go down through the rock wool so it's a lot behind the other plants I grew of stevia and dirt which I'll show you in a second All right, here's the stevia that I germinated in soil. I had four plants, I'm left with two. When they germinate, they're so small that when I sprayed them, it washed into the soil and killed two of the plants. So I'm left with two. I have still the one in hydroponics. These two are doing better than the one in hydroponics because the uh, plant didn't have to go through rock wool to hit the nutrients, but I think that one will take off soon. But um, let me show you some stevia that I've grown in the past outside and I've actually had some going, gone to flower, and I'll show you that too. And over here, as my favorite, is the uh, stevia plant, or stevia. And that's actually banned in the European Union, Union, except for France. Banned in Singapore and Hong Kong. But it's a uh, sweetener. And, um can be used to treat heartburn or hypertension and you can actually add it to chicken feed to strengthen the egg for a 75 percent reduction in egg breakage which I didn't know till today until I looked it up but kids love it just pop a leaf in your mouth and it tastes like sugar hey everybody what you're looking at here are stevia flowers and my stevia plants have gone to seed it's kind of windy out here but um yeah i'm getting ready to harvest the seeds and harvest the leaves and make some stevia extract what you're looking at here are some free seeds that i got from bloomdaily.com i guess he had a promotion last summer and bought too many seeds and offered them up for free uh, check out his site bloomdaily.com he has a different deal every day on one gardening item or a hydroponic item or a different tool up to 80 percent off and the deal goes until it sells out that day, and then a new deal pops up the next day. Yeah, so check them out. And uh, I have a couple things going on here that I haven't showed you. Something that I've been working on for two months, and it's just about done. So you'll see that in about two weeks coming up. And um, some other things that I've planted. So until next time, take care, everybody.